have thought among Miami's very own Coconut Grove with historic landmarks and beautiful restaurants and people walking all over the place, there'd be a little bit more than meets the eye. Now let's meet with Sandy as she speaks to us about the spookiest locations and happenings here in Florida's fifth oldest settlement, Coconut Grove. Miami now wants badly to be the gateway to the Americas. This tiny little seaside colony was the gateway to the world. When we cross um, from the old Coconut Grove Playhouse to an area on the bay side, people are touched, their hands are gripped, or they feel a hand on their arm, and there's a particular kind of hug uh, that's like a sideways hug that seems very First Nations sideways hug. I recognize it, and we believe that we have three spirits that uh, move and occupy the space. There are, during certain periods, cold spots throughout, um, and they generally occur and in the same periods of time where we have the greatest uh, occurrence of people on the tour being touched. In this same area, there are tall, slim, silver-white figures that often appear. There are figures that appear with the guests. This is where that photograph was taken last year. My guest was so, she wanted to volunteer right away. Me, 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 and she walks out there. And on the way back, this dark figure materializes behind her, but so close behind her that we expect her to go like this nothing she's walking back to us innocent and completely unaware of this figure a head taller than her that is right up against her well we were all mesmerized and one photograph was taken and at that time I, I was relieved that someone thought to take a picture because I was so focused on what was right in front of me that figure stayed glued to her for 12 to 15 feet before it dissipated. And when she got back to us, everybody started talking at one time. About a minute later, I hear a voice say, do I have something here? And like to a magnet, we go over to see what she's got on this camera. And she caught that figure all right, but in the photograph, you can see clearly another woman standing behind my guest. The head taller that we saw, the proportions fit perfectly, but we can look, but we can see her hair, we can see the features on her face. It was and is, it's extraordinary. And I can't look at that picture without remembering how differently we see things and how these devices, the, the digital cameras do make a big difference. The area is so filled with energy, we get pictures of masses of ectoplasm, we get extraordinary pictures of orbs, not some tiny thing, and if you look into the, very often they fill the whole field of the camera. But in a way, the ones that I'm most curious about right now are the pictures we're not getting. And what I mean is this, about four months ago, I had walked out into this area, and I, I do it as a preliminary, and then I, I offer my guests the opportunity to do the same thing. And when I returned to the group, somebody said, Sandy, I couldn't get you to show up in the picture. And I laughed, you know. And I, I made some comment about, hey, I cast a reflection and I didn't think about it again. A Couple of weeks went by, and two people on a tour said something about, I wasn't in the picture. But then they stopped there, and nobody grabbed me by the lapels and said, you should have shown up in the picture. Right. They didn't do that. Then one day, I'm sitting next to a woman who's taking pictures of her friend coming back from the walk toward us. This was a Caucasian woman in a short white, white shirt and tan shorts. 
And the gal, her friend, takes a picture of her as she's walking back toward us and says, oh my God. And I thought, ooh, she got orbs or there's another figure or you because I'm used to that in the photographs. I said, oh, what? And I go to look and there's the area we were both looking at, the tree we were both looking at, the grass we were, and no human is in the picture. I saw this woman take the photograph of a human close enough that she would have been right there, easy to see. She's not in the photograph. All of a sudden, I heard all of those previous voices. Sandy, Sandy, he didn't come, he out, didn't in come out in the picture. And I realized it wasn't because they were taking a poor picture or I was wearing black. Okay. It was because I should have been in it and was not photographing. We've had it happen several times since. I don't really know, I don't know how to put that on the web page. What do I put an arrow with a blurb that mm -hmm. says person was here. standing here? Exactly, exactly. It is the most extraordinary place because of the energies here. Maybe that's what draws the ghosts. Maybe that's what makes it a more haunted place. I don't know, but I know that every night is different. I know that my guests tell me the most fantastic stories. Any doubt that you have is healthy and good. When I say, how many believers do I have? And a bunch of hands go up. And then I say, how many skeptics do I have? And a bunch of hands go up. And you know what? I've raised my hand both times because I'm a believer and I'm a skeptic. Skepticism, asking questions, finding out what's authentic and what isn't. It all belongs in the same attitude because there's nothing much more important to us than our the quality of our life, which includes our health, and the concept of what comes next. Everything else is fluff. On behalf of everyone at Miami 2.0, we'd like to thank Sandy Walker for opening our eyes and also showing us that those little blurs you see in your pictures might not just be little blurs after all. If you'd like to know more information about the ghost tours of Coconut Grove, please visit ghostgrove.com. See you guys and have a safe and happy Halloween.